Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Holy Week, and we have started the series uh, Walking with Jesus, Retracing the Steps of Jesus as He is on His way to the cross. And today we are going to look at John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse number 1, John says, It was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come for Him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. On this day, the people were celebrating the Passover, and Jesus has his final meal with his disciples right before he goes to the cross. And as they were eating the meal, Luke says something that John does not record, and it is this, that Jesus' own disciples on this night as they were eating began to argue over who was the greatest in the kingdom of God. Now remember, Jesus had already told them before that he was going to the cross and he was going to lay down his life and on the third day he was going to rise from the dead. And now these guys, his own disciples, are arguing over who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You know, that's not what Jesus wanted to hear on the, just the days before he was to go to the cross. And can you imagine James saying, I am the greatest. I was one of Jesus' first chosen disciples. I, I was with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, so I have to be the greatest. Then Peter pipes up and says, now wait a minute, I'm the greatest. I was the first disciple that Jesus called. Besides that, I was with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. And I also was the one who walked on the water, so I have to be the greatest. Andrew, Peter's brother, says, Peter, you be quiet. You also sank when you were walking on the water. These guys were arguing over who was the greatest. And the greatest was right there in their midst. And so, you know, it's a shame today, but that's like the world. Who is the greatest? People think that greatness is in the position that you hold, the job that you may have, that you have a six-figure income, or maybe that, that you drive an expensive car. Some think greatness is the size of house that you live in. And some people think greatness is how many people answer to you. But that's not greatness in the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he shows them what greatness really is in the kingdom of God. John says he knew that he was about to return to the Father and he wanted to show them the full extent of his love. He never wanted them to doubt his love for them. And he always wanted them to remember this lesson. And while they are eating this meal... He takes a towel and a basin of water and he begins to wash the feet of these 12 disciples. You know, this job was reserved for the lowest of servants. And while the disciples are arguing over greatness, Jesus shows them greatness by washing their feet. And think about this. During Bible times, guys normally wore sandals, and even sometimes went barefooted. And the roads were dirty, dirt roads. They didn't have indoor plumbing like we have today, so there was sewage out on the streets and animals leaving things behind on the streets. And can you imagine washing the dirt and grime and filth and the stink that was on these guys' feet? You, this is, you talking about disgusting? This would be disgusting, but Jesus washes their feet. And look, he's even washing the feet of Judas, the one 
whom he knew was going to betray him. Why did he do this? Because he wanted Judas to know that he loved him. And he wanted Judas to know that there is forgiveness available to him. And he gave Judas an opportunity to change his plan of action. You know, the disciples didn't understand the message on this day, and Jesus knew they didn't comprehend it all. And he says in verse number 12, When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you, asked them? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus was saying, guys, you want to be blessed? Then you need to do what I have done. You need to do exactly what I've done for others, and that is serve others. You see, greatness in God's eyes is not how many people serve you, but it's how many people you are serving. You know, many people today want others to serve them. They don't want to get their hands dirty. Their, their life is all about them. Life, they believe, revolves around them. But that's not the attitude of Jesus Christ, and that's not the attitude that He wants us to have. His attitude was this, I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. You see, that should be our motto. That was the motto of Jesus. He came to serve others, not to be served. And we should be looking for ways that we can serve others to get our hands dirty and to fulfill the call of Christ on our lives, and that is to be a blessing to others. And when we do serve others, Jesus said, you will be blessed in doing what I have done, in following the example I have set before you to serve others. You know, many people say, I want to be like Jesus. Well, if we want to be like Jesus, then we have to get our hands dirty, and we have to serve. We have to love others and show them that Jesus loves them and that we love them. And my friend, when we do, Jesus says, we'll be blessed in doing these things. Come on, God's looking for servants. And so our response should be, here am I, Lord. Use me today to be the servant you want me to be. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today that you were the greatest servant of all, that you gave your life so we might have eternal life. And Lord, I pray that we would not keep our eyes focused upon ourselves, but Lord, we will look at others, that we will look for ways to serve others, to be a blessing. Because Lord, it is not about us, but this life is all about you and touching others for your kingdom. And I pray blessings upon your people. And Lord, I know that you're going to bless them as they do serve others. Yes, sometimes it is not always easy. And sometimes we are not rewarded here on this earth for everything that we do. But that's not what's most important. The rewards of this earth, they pass away. But the rewards that you have for us in heaven, they endure forever. And Lord, help us to be like you. Help us to take your word and to put it into practice and to be the servants you want us to be to show others your love. And we give you thanks and praise. Bless your people. I pray that you would give them peace and protection. Lord, we thank you today for this day you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today.